Jackson College and is heading up the Jackson College Winter Film Series or Spring Film Series or whatever name it's going by this year, <laughs> Mike Mara. Hi, Mike. Hey, how you doing? Good, good to see you. So it's called, it's been the Winter Film Series, it's been the Jackson College Film Series. What is it this year? It is, I believe, since we switched the name of the semesters from the winter semester to the spring semester, I think we'll go with spring film series. Okay, even though it starts in the dead of winter. Right. So, <laughs> <laughs> well, and today um, you're going to announce the films, but before you do, we need to find out a little bit about you because in the entire history of the winter film series, there have only been two, two instructors. I'm in two rare leaders. company. Yeah. Mm hmm. <laughs> And they've both been great. <laughs> and the most recent one, Dave DeBaker, has been with us many times, mm -hmm. previews the films, shares his love of films. What about you? How, how did you tell us about you know, your interest in, in movies? I mean, I've always been a fan of going to the movies my entire life, right? Mm -hmm. um, I was raised on pictures, uh, watching movies for fun all the time. And uh, I uh, went to CMU to get my uh, undergrad, uh, my bachelor's degree in, uh, oh, what was it? Broadcast and, and cinematic arts. Oh, right? we've had a, we've hired a ton of people from that program up <laughs> right. there. I, I saw yeah. a few uh, familiar faces, but uh, and uh, while I was there, uh, I took a class, and uh, it was a it was a 500 level class. I was terrified. It was science fiction films, mm -hmm. and uh, I realized that there was a man right there uh, at the front of the class. And uh, he was getting paid <laughs> to talk about <laughs> movies for four hours a night, once a week. And I was like, you know what? I can do that. I can get paid to talk about movies. And so then I went off and uh, got my master's degree in film theory and criticism. And, uh, you know, the rest is history. Cool. Have you ever made a film? No, no. no I've, uh, that's a lie. I, uh, I, I mean, we all made films when we were kids, right? I right. Made, made some, you know, little things with a camcorder, <laughs> right? But, uh, you know, nothing professional. I was part of a handful of student films with uh, some of my friends there at CMU. So, you know, never a really big talking part. You know, usually just a shambling zombie or something mm -hmm. along those lines. What, what genre is your favorite? Probably these days, probably horror. I've really? been I've been a big horror nut for a while. Oh. Yeah, it's a fun fact. I, uh, I wasn't a big fan of the genre at all, but then I took a horror film class at CMU and I couldn't get enough. Hmm. I should mention the, uh, the other two of JC faculty members that have run this course, uh, Anne Green, she was first, and then Dave DeBaker. And I'm almost 100% certain that it's just those two that have done it the whole time. So I am honored to follow in their <laughs> footsteps. It, it's part of the English uh, program at Jackson College, right, film? Right, yeah, it's a, it's a class as well, right? And so what's going to happen is... Um, the students show up a little bit earlier. Um, I've got a you know hour, hour and a half lecture that gives them you know some history, some ideas, some terms, and then uh, then after that, uh, the the rest of the public's joined. Uh, they're welcome to join in. We all get to sit and watch a picture together. Now, when you select the movies, if you could, you'd probably go all horror because that's your favorite. <laughs> yeah, I mean, if you look at the list, it does it does skew that way a little bit. Well, let's do. <laughs> let's talk about the list because there are there are a couple of classic. Uh, thriller and horror films on this list. So it starts on January 9th, and you go way, way back. Way back. 100 years. 100 years old this year. Yeah, I, um, when, I've, when I've taught film classes in the past, um, I, I taught uh, basically this class at JC, uh, but it was, uh, it was on campus. Um, when I like to teach film classes, I like to, um, I like to do a whole history of, uh, of cinema. Right. Um, this all started back when I was a, a TA at CMU and I was a teaching assistant for uh, history and appreciation of cinema. And I always liked that we started right there at the beginning and made it all the way to the present. Right. And um, uh, in that class, <laughs> it, it was a little longer than, than, than what I do in, in, in this class here. But um, I don't believe they watched a film with spoken dialogue <laughs> until week four or five. They didn't watch a color film until week eight or nine. <laughs> but but I, I've, I've shortened that up a little bit. But I, I do like to start in the silent era, black and white, silent films, classics. And that's why we start with, uh, right there, Nosferatu, 1922. Nosferatu. Now, it's not the very beginning of film. You'd have to go back to... Uh... Oh, maybe the Lumiere brothers. Right, right, in the, in the late, late 1800s, right, when they were just magicians doing a stage act. 
You do uh, have another uh, silent film in uh, week two, and this is a uh, Charlie Chaplin uh, classic on the 16th of January. Yep, and that's a, yeah, Modern Times. It's, a, it's, a, it's another classic. I'm going to say classic a lot, my bad. Uh, but uh, <laughs> but it, is, it, is, it is a classic, and um, it, does, it does feature some sound. It does feature some dialogue. Uh, Charlie himself, I don't believe, says anything, but uh, there are other characters that oh. do have spoken dialogue. He was, he was really worried about the, uh, the transition from silent to, to, to talkies. He didn't know if he could pull it off. And he, he obviously did later, right, with yeah. The Great Dictator and things like that. But, uh, but in, in these early days, he was still a little wary about whether or not he should, you know, speak. <laughs> Some actors didn't have a voice for talkies. Right, right. It looks like you go chronologically in your uh, presentation. Mm -hmm. You start in 1922, and then you go all the way to 2022, Yep. and you go in pretty much in order. Yeah, I like to, I, I like to pick uh, one film per decade, mm -hmm. right? Um, I obviously don't have enough weeks for as many decades as there are in film, but yeah, I like to, you know, we've got 20s, 30s, we skip the 40s, we, we, we hit the 50s, and we go on from there. So yeah, I like that a lot. I think 40s was a bad decade for movies because of the war. <laughs> for sure, yeah. Uh, now, uh, from 1955, Kiss Me Deadly, and that's one I'm not familiar with. Kiss Me Deadly, it is a, uh, uh, it's, it's great for a couple reasons. Uh, one, it's an excellent example of film noir. Right, a, a franchise that we're all familiar with, you know, hard-boiled detectives and femme fatales and twisty plots, right? And it's, a, it's all introspective. We're all thinking about who are we as people, right? Um, but the other fun thing about it is it's a very late film noir. Usually the, uh, the time period that we put on film noir is something between 1937 and, and basically the late 50s. This is an early, a later picture. And the reason I've picked it is because um, not only is it a great example of film noir, but it's also a uh, commentary on the, um, the atomic age, of the, okay. the horrors of, of that, right? Um, the, the MacGuffin is a, uh, is a suitcase that may or may not contain some radioactive slash nuclear slash atomic terror, you know, materials. All right, spoiler alert, we'll stop spoiler there. Spoiler alert, my bad. <laughs> now, as we get into the uh, 60s and 70s, films that are familiar to everyone, uh, here's your first horror one, uh, Halloween from 78. 1978, John Carpenter, one of the best, if not the best examples of the, uh, the slasher genre. He basically invented it wholesale right there in 1978. <laughs> and um, it's just a classic. It's, um, it still holds up today. Um, not really gory. Uh, a lot of people uh, remember it being really, really disgusting. And uh, it's not too gory, but it is very terrifying. It's very, very spooky. Um, Jamie Lee Curtis kills it in, 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 in the role. And uh, one fun fact is uh, that John Carpenter actually wrote the soundtrack as well, oh, which, really? is, which is great. Yeah, oh. you, it, it, it really it propels the whole thing. Uh, I skipped a graduate from the 60s. That's been, I think that's been in the film series before. I believe so, yeah. And uh, 1987, RoboCop. RoboCop. Why I, RoboCop? Uh, RoboCop for a number of reasons. Uh, one, it's just one of my favorite movies. I love RoboCop. Every time it shows up on TV, I have to watch it. Um, I quote lines from RoboCop daily in my house. <laughs> my wife's pretty sick of it at this point. Um, it's, uh, the second reason is because it is, it is just, it's action-packed. It's, it's really enjoyable. It's, it's full of action, lots of explosions. Um, it's, uh, it's not for the kids. It's rated R. It is hyper-violent. It is an incredibly violent picture. Um, but the best thing about it is that it does, it is a really great commentary on um, late capitalism, 1980s era overconsumption. Um, on the surface, it's this really violent action picture, but if you dig, dig a little bit deeper, it is this really, really poignant satire of the time period, and that, that's why it's on the list. You've got Fargo, I, I love that. I love the Coen brothers, pretty much everything they do. Mm -hmm. uh, social Network, it seems like it wasn't that long ago, but it was 2010. 2010. I don't like to think about the social <laughs> network being 12 years old, but yeah, that's uh, yeah. it's a. Uh, it, I think it's an incredibly important picture. Um, obviously, social media has uh, infected. We'll say infected. You know, every aspect of our lives, and seeing how that really came to be with uh, the history of Mark Zuckerberg and how he put together that website is, is really great. And, and the picture itself is just brilliant. Uh, David Fincher's direction is amazing. All of the acting is amazing. Um, but one of the best things about the social network is the editing. Uh, the, the way that the, the, the shots are put together 
and the, the editor's name is, is, I'm blanking right now, but um, there's this really wonderful moment about halfway through the picture where you've got um, some students on a crew team, you know, uh, mm -hmm. rowing down the, and, um, the Winklevosses. And it's, yes, very good. And, um, and they're, they're on the crew team and then they're going down the, going down the river. And uh, it's all um, on top of the scene. We've got this really excellent adaptation of Hall of the Mountain King, which was written by Trent Reznor of Nine Inch Nails. Mm -hmm. And so that's playing in the soundtrack and the editing. We're just going from shot to shot to shot. And it just, it's so good. It's, it's, just, it's just guys rolling down the river, mm -hmm. but it's just, it is so intense to, to, to watch it. And it's, that's, that's the magic of movies, right? Yeah. Is we can make even just some guys on a boat seem really exciting. Now we've got, there's a few more, but uh, it all ends with the 2022 movie, Everything Everywhere All at Once. And I, I don't know, what is that movie? <laughs> <laughs> Did you see it? No. Oh, it's fantastic. It's a uh, it's a, a picture put together by uh, these uh, two guys, a directing team. They call them they call themselves Daniels. Um, one of them has Daniel for a first name. One of them has Daniel for a last name, I believe. Oh, okay. And it's a it's a it's a couple of them. And they had this idea percolating for the better part of a decade to make a movie about a multiverse. What would what what would it be like if we were aware of ourselves, but in an alternate? universe an alternate hmm. dimension and uh, they, they had this idea and it had been percolating for years and years and years and then the uh, the comic book movies the marvel movies they hmm. started taking this idea and making multiverse movies of their own and they were worried that they had lost their chance uh, but they did write something really exciting really funny and um it stars michelle yo who's just been amazing for decades since the 80s. Um, and she, she, she rules this thing. We see a bunch of different versions of her. You know, um, she, her main character works at a laundromat, but, uh, but she runs into, uh, she, she inhabits the body of other versions of herself where mm -hmm. she's a, a movie star or, or a, you know, a martial artist or, or things like this. And it's just, it's funny, it's scary, it's action packed. Um, and it has this really nice message at the end. It runs for two and a half hours long, but the pacing is killer. And it's just, it's really fantastic. Sounds like a great lineup. I'll be looking forward to coming to some of these movies and seeing you again. I'll be back. Yeah, good luck. have me. Good luck <laughs> as they pass the, uh, uh, the golden popcorn box to you. <laughs> I, I gladly <laughs> receive it and I will treat it with kindness. Great. Have a great, uh, great season of the uh, spring film series at the Michigan Theater. Thanks, Mike. Thanks for having me. Jackson College professor Mike Mara. Uh, more to